Okay, you guys, I am super excited. So um, for those of you that don't know, I got put into this amazing chat with a bunch of women who are pushing for presidential. We're all lifetime triple diamonds. And that's how I got to meet Candace. Um, this story is awesome. I specifically went in the chat and I asked like, who has a comeback story? Because we've all felt like, if you guys weren't around in like, what year was that, 2018? Mark Pentecost talked about the dark horse. We've all felt like the dark horse. We've fallen behind. Maybe we're not doing as well as we were at the beginning. Or maybe you're brand new and you feel like you haven't even really taken off at all. And you're wondering if it's still possible for you. You're wondering if somebody like you can be successful. And so that's why I love a comeback story. I love a good comeback story because it just shows that anything is possible. So I'm going to ask you on mute and I'm going to have you tell whatever version of your story you would like to bestow <laughs> upon us tonight. Well, Hope, thank you so much for having me on tonight. I'm super excited to chat with you guys. I know you guys have no idea who the heck I am. I promise I will, I will share and explain in a moment. But do me a favor, y'all. I thrive when I see faces. So turn your cameras on if you can. If you're like in the tub or like in the shower, no problem. Don't need to see that. But if you are available, turn your cameras on because in moments like this, where you get to hear how you get to flip your business upside down, you want to make sure that you are fully present and available. So go ahead and flip your camera on, be fully present, sit up straight, like shake off the day, whatever it is you need to do. Trust me, it's late. I'm on the East Coast. It's 10 o'clock at night, but I'm here and I'm excited. So um, without you know, going further down that road, you guys. My name is Candace Thomas. I'm a triple dime with It Works. Um, and I'm going to give you guys the full run of the gamut of my story because there is power in the comeback if you choose it, okay? If you choose it. And so I initially joined this business, you guys, in 2013. So April of 2013 um, was when I initially hit the click to join button um, and said yes to this opportunity. I was watching a friend, um, a childhood friend, actually. Um, I had no idea what it works was. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know what the products were. I didn't know anything about the company. But I vividly remember her sharing photos of herself in the body wrap on Instagram. And she and I have been friends since we were nine years old. And I remember thinking, is she insane? Like, is she crazy for putting these photos of her belly on Instagram for all the world to see? Like social media in 2013 was not what it is today. Um, and I just thought it was weird, but I could not stop watching. I could not stop watching. I was so intrigued. I was so interested as to like, why are you even doing this? Like, what is this? Why are you so excited about it? Like, it's really weird to me, but I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. And so I just remember watching her and I remember inboxing her to kind of ask her questions like about the products, like what exactly, like, why are you doing this type of thing? And she's like, I'm going to retire from my full-time job. And like, I'm going to retire my husband whenever I get married and all these things. And I was like, yeah, girl, okay, <laughs> like whatever. Um, and I just kept watching her and she reached out to me one day, maybe like many of you guys. And she said, hey, like, have you thought about making some extra income. And at the time I was a full-time preschool teacher. I was in graduate school full-time and I was in newlyweds. My husband and I had just been married just about a year at that point. So almost a year at that point. And I loved my job, but as many of you guys could pr probably understand, I had way more months than money. Um, and I was just like, I desperately need a part-time job, but I do not have any time um, between work. If you guys know anything about childcare, it is nine hour days, full days, and you're lucky if you leave the building on time. Okay. Um, and so I was a preschool teacher. I was, like I said, I was in graduate school full-time. So I would leave work, go to school until like 11 o'clock at night, come home, do homework, go to bed, wake up and do the same thing over again the next day. Um, and it was because like, I was told, hey, you go to school, you get a good job, you climb the ladder, you do the thing. That's how you make it in this life. And so that's what I did. And I did it with a smile on my face. I did it the way everyone told me to do it, um, but I still didn't feel fulfilled. And so I remember... Um, I joined the business, you guys, I went really, really fast. Like I went Ruby in like 45 days. I was hustling. I was like super excited. 
I tried the ride for the first time and got the most amazing results of my entire life. I'm not exaggerating. Um, I had lost like an entire like pants. It was like insane. The ride results that I got, um, excuse me. And I didn't do anything special. I literally shared my results photos with every single person in my phone. I was the definition of ignorance on fire. Literally. Like I was like, Oh snap. Like I got the best results I've ever seen in my life. Every single person I know needs to see this. And my excitement grew my business so incredibly fast. Guys, I signed my set, my first DT, my second day in the business. And all I remember is I went to her house. Okay. Granted, we're in the middle of like craziness. We can't go to people's houses, but I went to her house and I was like, Hey, listen, she messaged me. She's like, Hey, I saw your results. I want one. Can you bring me one tomorrow? I said, yes. I went to her house and I'm like, listen, I don't know how all of this works, but what I do know is like, I am going to make $65 when I leave your house tonight. Okay. Don't do what I did, but I was selling reps for $65 with personal appointments, I was doing the whole gamut. And I would leave people's houses with $65 in cash and over 120 BB every single time. Okay. Ignorance on fire. And so she joined me that night because I was so freaking excited. I was like, listen, I don't know what I'm doing, but if you are willing to learn with me, like let's do it together. And she was like, oh wait, like I can just spend an extra 30 bucks and like join. Yeah. Like put me in. And so she joined we learned together. We went really, really fast. Right. And then I got to this point in my business where like I was Ruby, like everything was great. I was fully charted for diamond and I got scared and I was just like, holy crap. Like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, what do I do with this? Like, I don't actually believe that like this $2,000 average is on this diamond chart is actually real. Um, and then coincidentally, at the same time, I was offered a brand new job. And I was like, actually, this is my sign. I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. I don't need this. Um, obviously, like this was God's way of like showing me what to do in the interim. But like, thank you so much for your time. It was like that type of thing. But in the meantime, like I was still like secretly like sharing samples in the back of my office when I got my new $20,000 raised job, right? And so I never formally quit the business, you guys. It was just kind of something that I sat on the back burner, mostly because I was ashamed. And so I don't know if you're on this call tonight and you are like, I'm actually embarrassed to be a rep girl. (laughs) I'm embarrassed to share my results. I'm embarrassed to like, because I feel like I'm spamming people. I feel like I'm bugging people. I feel like I'm getting on people's nerves. I feel like people don't actually want to buy this or like aren't actually interested. That's how I felt. And so I hid behind this like corporate title, right? I was the head of early childhood education at that point, like big fancy title, nice office, all that. Like, I don't need this business. And so I let it go, right? And so I remember in the back of my mind, like, I feel like God always gives us these reminders. In the back of my mind, I'm like, this is nice, but I'm driving two hours a day to work, okay? I got pregnant while I was on that job. If you've ever driven long distance, big belly pregnant, it is miserable, right? And I had to do it every single day because I was bringing in, I was making more than my husband at the time. So I'm like, I can't leave this job. Even as much as I hate this being pregnant, I can't go anywhere, right? And I felt like my hands were tied. And so long story short, I ended up getting a new job. Yes, it's not a good feeling. Like those long commutes are not fun. I don't care how much money you make. It's not, it's not fun. Um, and so I ended up getting a new job, right? Closer to home. Cause that's what you're told to do. Like, if it's not convenient, you find another one. That's what I did. I got something closer to home, um, maybe 20 minute commute. I had my daughter by that point. And I thought I had like fulfilled the dream, right? I could bring my daughter to work with me. It was like the most ideal situation in my opinion. Six months in you guys, I went to a, a personal or like a professional development conference in the morning. By the evening, they were asking for my keys and credit card, and I did not understand why, okay? I walked out of that building that day with no job, a toddler on my hip, like trying to figure out what was going to be the next step. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I was humiliated. I had all of these questions, and I'm just like, God, like, what is next for me? Have you guys ever felt that way? Like, what the heck is the next step? Where do I even go from here? Because for me, I had hit my rock bottom. Like, I had that for me was the absolute pit of the pits. Like it was terrible. And I just remember in the midst of like all of these feelings, embarrassment, humiliation, like all of these things, 
I'm thinking in the back of my head, like as much as this sucks, I like being home. I like like being able to wake up when I want to. I like not having to wake my daughter up at five o'clock in the morning to take her to school so that I can go to work. I like being able to give her lunch. I like being able to witness her first that so many other people were witnessing but me up until that point. And I remember thinking to myself, like if I could only make a certain amount of money, I could stay home and the wheels started turning. And so this business that I had put on the back burner started to look really, really good. I remember a BOGO rap sale came up and my same friend that introduced me that was slinging raps all over Instagram, right? In 2013, she messaged me out of the blue and she was like, hey girl, have you thought about coming back? And I was like, how do you know my life? Like, what do you know about me? Cause I hadn't told anyone what happened. No one knew why I was home. No one knew I had lost my job. And I truly believe that that door shutting was God's way of saying, you don't have another choice. Like you have to do this. You put this on the back burner before, this is it. And so I joined, I rejoined the business that I remember that month. She was like, hey girl, listen, like I need you to go Ruby this month. Are you down? And I was like, "Uh, I haven't done anything in like three years, but sure, like whatever, let's go. And I went Ruby that month and I was just like, okay, God, like I, I don't have any other questions. Like if this is it, I'm going all in. Like, if this is it for me, I'm going to figure it out because the alternative. And so I told you guys all of that story for a reason. We think for so long, like the path that we've been on is like supposed to be our path, right? This is supposed to be where I am. This is supposed to be what, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? This is supposed to be my life. As bad as it sucks, right? As bad as it's far away from what we really want and the life that we really want to live, we settle in it. Because we feel like we don't have another choice. And I felt like in that moment, the door got slammed in my face. And it was like, hey, do or die. Like you do this or you go back to a life that you hate, right? Either you suck it up, you pull up your big girl pants and you do the thing and you be willing to figure it out or you go back to a life that you hate. And I think so many times the part where people get stuck is that in between, The life that you hate is comfortable because that's what you've always done. The life you want is hard because it's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. But we relax and settle in the life that we hate because it's the most familiar, right? And so I made a decision when I relaunched my business, you guys, in March of 2016, April, actually, because we renewed my account that month, right? So April of 2016, I made a decision that regardless of what happened before, I was going to figure this out. I was going to figure it out no matter how long it took, no no matter how many sleepless nights I had, no matter what it looked like, I was willing to figure it out because I was more willing to figure this out than I was to go back to the life that I had before, okay? I don't like anybody telling me what I had to do with my time. Do not tell me when I had to get up, do not tell me when I can go on vacation, when I can be sick, when my kids can be sick, like I'm not interested. And so I made a decision in April of 2016 that I was willing to figure it out, okay? Now notice you guys, I didn't say anything about, I'm gonna go diamond, I'm gonna go double. I was willing to figure it out, meaning I don't know what the journey is gonna look like, but I'm willing to take whatever step is in front of me to move to the next one and then to the next one and then to the next one. And so I went Ruby in April, right? I think it took me like maybe, I don't know. I went Emerald in October. So I I had earned a spot on the cruise. I don't know how long you guys have been here, but we had like a big, huge like cruise promotion then. I earned a spot on the cruise and this is a crazy part, right? So so many people would quit. I earned a spot on the cruise and literally the day before my flight left, something said, talk to your doctor and see if this is okay. Cause remember just like, like Corona is a big thing now, Zika virus was a huge thing at that point. And I remember emailing my OB and I'm like, Hey, I'm not pregnant, but like I'm going to the Caribbean. Like, do you think it's a good idea? And she was like, actually, no, you're not. You're not going. 
and I got pregnant the next month, you guys. And I remember being so devastated, like, oh, this was supposed to be the trip that was like going to explode my business. Like how many times do we hear like, go to events, go to events, go to events. I was like, this is supposed to be, be the event that's going to explode my business. And like, I can't even go. And like, I'm going to let so many people down. And like, this was like the one thing I was so excited about. And I could have had every reason to quit, but I made a decision again, that I was going to figure it out. And every step along the way, I didn't know what was ahead of me or like what it was going to be or how it was going to pan out. I was just willing to figure it out. I was willing to be a student. I was willing to be coachable. I was willing to do all the things that everyone else was not willing to do. I was willing, I was like volunteering. So let me ask you guys a question because y'all are quiet tonight. So let's wake up a little bit, right? How many of you guys want to be diamond, real or bad? Like, if you're not diamond and above yet, who wants to be a diamond? Drop a one in the chat. If you want to be a diamond, drop a one in the chat. Just drop it. Let me see. Okay. If you want to be a diamond, like, I just want to go diamond so badly. Let me go diamond, okay? That was me. And so I remember vividly, and hope you can stop me whenever. So I remember vividly talking to, so I had gone Ruby. And I had charted for diamond like 15 different times. Like you guys ever build a chart and it falls apart? Can we just be real and raw and honest, right? Build a chart, falls apart, people quit, blah, blah. And I remember being so pissed off. Like, oh my gosh, like this is never going to happen. These people don't want to work. Like nobody wants this as bad as I do, blah, 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 blah. I was like vomiting on everybody, okay? And so my upline was like, okay, well, I hear you. You're just not ready. And I was like, excuse me? Like, what do you... I'm not ready. Like, who do you think you are? Like, I am ready. Like, I've been, I've been told you're not ready by God, like six times in my business. Like, he's like, mm, actually, mm. You're not. and you're like, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not. I'm. Yeah. Like, I'm ready. Like, you're okay. so sure that you yeah. that you are prepared, and then it's like you have a year, like 2020, and I look back and I'm like, oh no, I was oh, not. I wasn't. Oh no, I was not. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I love that. Um, I do. I'll just touch on a couple things, and then I'll let okay. you finish because I know. Yeah. So did you go? You went triple in last year. Yes. Yeah, so I went triple in 2019. So yeah. what was it? April of 2019. So we went triple the same month. So we, yeah. I went triple. So I've been in since 2015. So I do remember the cruise. Um, and I remember how weird social media used to be. No, <laughs> Instagram was in chronological order. We had no lives. We had no stories. We had no, there was no TikTok. There was nothing. We yes, no, no, there's none of it message 300 people a day on Instagram oh, okay that's how uh, I learned to build my yeah. business it's not what we teach you guys now yeah. but um I was also living paycheck to paycheck and I just loved what you said like just you because you were stuck in this mindset of like you were a little embarrassed to be that that girl or that person you're like god I'm like that person on my feed like posting about the things and like hopping in people's inboxes and I just think that's super relatable especially when you're brand new because there is all of this stigma where you're like holding people like me and Candace who have made it to these like VIP ranks you're like holding us up on this pedestal of like look at all of the things they've been able to do and I'm not like that because you're like I don't know you're in this mindset where you're like I'm not that person I'm not that person. And it's like, but what you guys don't understand is that we were who you are just like five years ago. <laughs> like it just is a growth thing. And it's a mindset thing where you get your own results and your confidence comes. You start signing people and your confidence comes. Everybody wants to feel the confidence first. Yes. They're like once I feel confident, then I'll start rocking it. But it's like, you got to start rocking it before you can feel confident because you're not going to see any results until you start shoving it out there because you're not going to feel confident you're not going to feel good until you're getting good results and you can't get good results unless you're doing all of the things you need to be doing so love that and then I love you said it was just a decision and a willingness yes all of you guys who just put ones in the chat I know that feeling I was one year into my business I had promoted to Emerald I had dropped back down to executive I saw like an $180 paycheck and that ish burned y'all it burned I had seen like an $800 paycheck I knew that I wanted to go diamond I knew I wanted to make a full-time income and I just decided that I was willing to do whatever it took there was no daily KPI list that I finished at the end of the day and wiped off my hands and watched Netflix. I did as much as I could, as much as I could. 
And I woke up here and I was like, what am I thinking? What am I telling myself? What am I journaling every day? I found a journal this last season through the, through the weirdest fall season of my life where I found a journal from five years or four years writing, I am a diamond. I know, mm-hmm. like I know, like I know I'm a diamond. I'm willing, I'm ready, I'm here, I'm showing up. Show me God, what am I doing? Where am I going? Six months later, I went diamond. But it's not because I just sat around saying, gosh, it would be so nice. Yep. It would be so nice. I busted my butt, y'all. And there was no amount of work where I said I was done until I literally was, Jade Hooper talks about this, holding your eyes open with two. Because <laughs> you're like, I just got to send one more message. I just got to do one more follow-up. That was me. And I'm not saying that business has to run like that because the other thing I've learned in 2020 is like a lot about like Sabbath time and date night with my hubby and like, consistency over everything but if you are not where you want to be right now you're a new person and you don't feel like it's moving fast enough you're a ruby and you want diamond more than you want freaking oxygen (laughs) in your lungs you have to be willing she made a decision that she was going to figure it out day by day week by week month by month no matter how long it took and she was willing to do the things that other people were not willing to do. And I don't know if this is where you were going with having them drop the ones too, but Diamond is the top 2% of our company. You have to do what the other 98% of people are not willing to do. Yep. That includes doing the stuff that scares you. That includes showing up when you don't feel like it. That includes doing, do your KPI list by all means. It's a great list, but then do it again. Yep. And then do it again. And then do it again. Don't just say, okay, I got it. My 10 host to post when you still have messages in your inbox and you turn off for the night and you're done. No, you keep going. So I just love that. I love that you talk about willingness. Willingness is one of those things that it's like, I can't teach you to be willing. Yep. I can't teach you to be willing to do what it takes to be successful in this business. And when I say that, I don't say that to freak y'all out. Like you're going to spend every dang second of every dang day doing this business. I have a date night with my hubby. We do Thursday nights. I'm off my phone. Sunday mornings, my phone is off when I wake up. I take my Sabbath time until family call on Sunday. I spend time with my kid every day. I tuck him in. I kiss him on the head. That's why I do this business. So that I can live the life that I want to live. But also, I'm up at 530. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't watch Netflix until literally I'm about to climb in bed and I want to watch 15 minutes of Gilmore Girls to like soothe my system before I go to sleep. Like, I don't just do the bare minimum and that's how I've gotten to triple now going presidential pushing for ambassador like minimum effort will never give you the results that you're looking for um and so anyways I didn't that I just love and also oh and you said this and I just made me think of this no amount of money can actually bring you joy it's not about the money you guys she had a good job she had a good job she could bring her kid with her It didn't bring her joy. She was commuting. She was working with other people's kids. She had a schedule. She had had all these responsibilities. What brought her joy was selling wraps. And she didn't need to feel some type of, she did feel some type of way about that. She had to do some personal growth to decide that she was okay with being the wrap girl in the room. But that is what brought, she was stoked about these products. She was pumped about this opportunity. And that's where you have to get yourself is like, what about doing this business brings you joy? If I've got some, I I know I have a couple of diamonds on here. I know I have a few rubies and stuff on here. Would you tell me what about this business brings you joy? Because for me, it's like this. For me, it's like getting to like mastermind and collaborate and like this push group that we're in right now and like getting to meet new people and hear new stories. And it's like, that just it just bring it just I'm so damn happy when I'm doing it you guys I'm just so happy when I'm doing it and there's no amount of money that could replace the joy that I feel getting to connect and inspire and empower and collaborate and like that's what you need to find what part of this business is is you're like yeah like yes like this is it for me I love doing this because then the money comes Mm -hmm. The, you don't, it doesn't, ugh, it's hard to explain, but you don't, um, the money doesn't come and then the joy comes. It's like the joy comes and then the money comes because that's how manifestation and, and God and gratitude and all of it work in the first place. Yep. 
So <laughs> all of that being said, so you, we, you and I went triple the same month. Yeah. Lord knows 2020 was the dumpster fire if I ever saw one. Um, so talk to me a little bit about this. You hit triple. It was a weird rest of your year. What are you prioritizing both in your own business and for your team when it doesn't feel good? And you're like, I don't know if I'm willing to do this today. <laughs> so good. And I think to be really honest with you guys, like all 2020 was that for me. Like, I feel like I went through so many seasons personally where I was just like, I need a moment to like get my, my damn self together. Like I got to get my own, br- what is wrong with me? Like, is something off? And uh, to be, I'm saying that very honestly, because I don't ever want you to think that if you've had those moments that one, they go away. And two, that if you promote to a certain rank, you become exempt to, th- to those feelings. That's not true. The only difference between us and you is that we've figured out how to navigate out of them faster. Okay, we figured out how to navigate out of them faster and we figured out how to create alternative behavior. Something that we talked we talked about a lot on our team last year was getting making fun or like getting used to doing the mundane. Okay? Sending messages every day is not fun all the time. Okay? Adding people to your network every day is not fun. It's actually boring as hell, right? If we can be really honest, we get paid to copy and paste. Can we be honest tonight, right? Guys, literally all day. It's just like, holy crap. Yes. What else? But. And then you, I was going to say, and then you pair in with like, one of the most fun things we get to do in this business is like travel and like go do whatever we want. But then like, we can't go travel and do nothing. I was like at home all year. I will have to all day long. If that means that in June of 2021, I can go to Florida. Like I don't freaking care, but guess what? You don't get to go to Florida when you quit in January. You don't get to go to Florida when you quit in December because it wasn't moving the way you wanted it to move. Get used to doing the mundane and the joy will come. I love this. Like I love talking to people. I love sharing my story. Just like Hope said, I love listening to other stories. That is what inspires me to get up tomorrow and do this all over again. Okay. Before I was getting on other people's Zoom calls to share, guess what I was doing? I was finding sideline sisters all over the company that I could collaborate with, that I could connect with. I wasn't waiting for for my upline to give me permission to do anything. Okay. And so that's why I was going with the diamond thing. If you want to be a diamond, guys, show up as diamond now. Joy will manifest itself. You want to be a double a double diamond? Volunteer. Be the squeaky wheel. Like Cami talked about, talked to us about that the other day. Like be the leader you want to be right now. You do not need it to say diamond in yes. East Suite. And, in, and as a matter of fact, it will not say diamond in East Suite because once again, that's how gratitude, God, and manifestation works. Yep. I have been working like a triple diamond for years. And yes. now I'm working like an ambassador yes. every single day. And I show up every day and it's like, you guys, today... Oh my God, my anxiety is like 12 out of 10. My kid's nuts. My husband's going through some health stuff. It's still COVID. What happened last week? And I'm like a huge empath and my nervous system's all over the place. And I like got up 18 host to post and have sent out 50 messages so far today. Like, because when I woke up this morning, I was like, okay, well, like Ruby Hope would like go back to bed. But like yeah. Ambassador Hope is like get up. Showing up getting up and showing up and so we talk about that a lot like I I can just see the names of people on here it's like how does Tiani diamond leader show up for her life how does Teresa diamond leader show up for her life MJ Vanessa Alyssa I'd like see all these names how does that next best version of you show up for their life every single day don't wait I love don't wait don't wait because if you wait you'll wait forever yep literally I love that. (laughs) So I love that you just talked about that. So creating alternative, if you know that your knee jerk reaction to a bad day is to like not do the things that are going to benefit you and your business and like turn off and like be sulky and like have a moment, how do you 
what else can you do? Like, what do you do instead of that? Do you read a book? Do you meditate? Do you watch a Zoom? Do you do a podcast? Do you get on Zoom? You go into chat. Hey, who wants to get on Zoom and work with me? Like, how do you build habits that are more productive? That'll actually make you feel better rather than pouring a glass of wine and <laughs> binge watching Netflix. You know, not that there's not a time and place for that. That's why you schedule a Sabbath. That's why you schedule a date night. That's yeah. why, Lord willing, we will actually go to Margaritaville one of these days. Those of us who want to spot at Margaritaville. Yeah. I'm like still waiting for, for my trip to Margaritaville. But um, it's so important, you guys. And it's like, you can't, you have to, you have to, if, you, if, you're, if you're listening to us say this about like having bad habits and like needing to find joy in the mundane and you're like, oh, I haven't been doing that. Start tonight or tonight, I know it's late if you're already on the East Coast. When we get off here, do 30 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Do 30 more minutes, send a few more messages, put up one more post, throw a few more slides in your story, and then turn off. It's like, that's how you build a habit is you just do a little bit more and a little bit more. And suddenly you're like up until midnight because you're just like stoked on the results that you're getting. Yeah. They also need to be better at scheduling my days for productivity and taking an actual Sabbath. Um, that's something that to be, if I can be honest, like I like mistakenly got away from my Sabbath probably the last like month and a half. And I'm I agree. feeling it. I'm I agree. feeling it. Yeah. Okay? Um, and I used to be really, really good about taking it, but I got in this mindset of like working out of anxiety and not working out of faith and out of productivity, right? Yeah. Productivity, you guys, is doing the tasks fully, okay? It is not working them frantically until your eyebrows fall out. That's not what that is. That's called anxiety and that's not productive, right? So you want to create a schedule that you can stick to. One, start with prayer, meditation, personal development every single day, okay? I'll be honest, I'm a mom. My days look different. This morning, we got up my kid, like we got my kid off to school. She missed the bus, left her glasses. The morning was crazy, but I have to do it before I go to bed, right? And so it's less about the schedule for me personally. It's more about getting the task done, okay? So create your list of non-negotiables, right? What are the six things you have to get done no matter what. And that list will grow as you become disciplined in those things, but do not let your head hit the pillow until those six are done. And then maybe the next week at a seventh or eighth or whatever. No, like, I love that because, so we have, and I can send, if you want to see this or I can send it in the push chat or whatever. So we have this, our girl Jillian made this, it's a KPI and the boxes cross them out for, I have Monday through Sunday here. And so this is the, this is like the basic one. There's 10 things on here. One of them is just show yourself, which is literally just at some point, my face is in a video in my story, um, making a life post, sharing results, pictures, whatever. Last week I was like, it's a new year. Ma, ma, ma. And I like redid this list and I had like a bunch of extra crap on here and my list looked awful. You guys, there was so many empty boxes. And so instead of like getting all worked up and being like, why do I suck so bad? I was like, I'm going back to my basic list. I'm going back to my basic list. And today's Monday and I still got boxes to fill out. I got to do it before I go to sleep. And when I get to the end of the week, if I have a good week, then we'll go back to like the crazy 15 things on my to-do list. But the basics, the basics, the basics, the basics. You don't need, when you open up a recipe book and you're like, I'm gonna mix them cake I'm not a chef I'm not a baker I don't know you don't like you know what I'm just gonna like not put eggs in here and just like see what happens you just follow the recipe and me and Candace didn't pull this recipe out of our butts we learned it from the people who are already successful and their cakes are like beautiful and moist and delicious and come out perfect every time and you're like oh my cake tastes like that I'm gonna follow the recipe to the T and that's what you're gonna get. It's not an. It's not a. Well, that sounds great for you, Hope. Mm -hmm. But like, that's not how it's gonna work out for me. No, that doesn't. Well, that doesn't. and like the trial and error before, right? I think it's so easy to look at an Ashley Renau, a Cheyenne Knox, a Ashley Mayfield, and you see the surface of their story. It is you so see, easy to just so look at somebody's Instagram story and be like, Oh my God, they have it all figured out and it looks beautiful, and I can't do it. No, but what happened before? I vividly remember watching Cheyenne's 
video, like a Zoom video of her as a diamond trying to go double. And she was like so meek and like not confident. And like every and time me like- and Cheyenne went, me and Cheyenne, I'm not, I'm under Jade also. So she's like my sideline. And we went, we went double the same month. And then she has her whole comeback story. And now yeah. she's one of, and now she's one of those people who I'm like, I find myself comparing myself to her, but it's like, wait, I knew her when she was a Ruby. What, what? Like, so and you do, question, you have to see yeah. it. But the question then needs to be like, what happened in the in-between? How did she become, and I say this to my team all the time, how do you become the person that holds the capacity for what you want? Okay, Cheyenne today is not Diane, um, Diamond Cheyenne, right? Mm-mm. She's not the same person. And so there was a transformation period in between that she was willing to take that we did not get the privy to see the, the good, bad, and ugly of. That's not our business. But are you willing to take your own journey to get to your part two, right? Exactly. Well, you don't see, you don't see growth. Yep. Like you can't see, it's not, you don't see, okay, growth, 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 growth. Oh, there she goes. It's like, you see this mm-hmm. and then you see that. And you're like, oh my God, how did you get up there? And it's like, dude, there was so much in that in between. That's how I feel about this year was like, I started working with um, a life coach. I started really working on like the personality stuff and working on my own knee jerk reaction to things and, and all these, and all these different things. And I just think that, um, you, but you can't, but you don't see it under the service. You just know who, for my team, you know who I was a year ago and you know who I am now. And I pray to God, you can see the difference because I feel a huge shift in me. Um, but you couldn't actually see the work that I was doing, the phone calls and the podcast and the journaling and the tears and the moments and the terrible days and all of the things you just see where it is now. So, um, yeah. I was just going to say also, um, yeah, new, Danny. Danny's been on. Danny's been on my team for five years. She's my first distributor. You can see her adorable baby girl there. That's baby Lorelai, and she just had Lorelai at the beginning of July, and so it's like new mom, pandemic, all of the things. But she she knows you. She knows how to do the basics. But it is. It's like that expansion of like, how do you become that mom who can who can handle it all? There's an adjustment period. There's an in between time, but so you said you like you were pregnant and now you have you have two two yeah you have two now so talk about that a little bit that that expansion of like when more things get added onto your plate it can be such a weird adjustment so maybe give us some tips on that how do you rock it through the adjustment this will probably sound like such a weird answer but like you literally I don't know if you guys are on the call KK but she talked about the two millimeter, the two millimeter shift, right? That is a real thing. And the reason why I say that is because I was thinking the other day, I'm like, it was harder for me to work my business with my oldest being in virtual school part-time than it was for me to work it with a toddler and a newborn. Why is that, right? The only reason why it was harder for me was because I could not get out of my own mind. Like I remember like when my son was born, like I was working my business. I would have him in the doc top on the couch next to me, my charts on one side, my laptop in my lap, and I would just go. If he was sleeping, I was messaging. He woke up to feed, I would nurse him and message at the same time. My mind was in a place that it was literally nothing can stop me from doing what I need to do. Not my kids, not my husband, not the toddler, nobody. And like, you have to set your mind on what that thing is and stop allowing the excuses of your environment to infiltrate that. Cause that's really all it is. It becomes this thing of like, oh, like I actually don't have time. Cause like my kids need me or like, I actually can't because like I have to go cook or I don't, I have no freaking idea how I cooked, fed anyone, bathed anyone, ate myself, like took a shower. I don't know. I was just so focused on getting it done that my body went literally into like muscle memory and it just did it. So like, you just had to make a decision one day, like tomorrow, do it tomorrow, wake up and be like, you know what? When my baby's asleep, I'm messaging. When she is awake, like I would put my kid on a schedule. Hey, like get up, eat breakfast, do some independent play while he played independently. I was messaging. Then we would go to the library. I would play with him for a little bit, put him down for a nap, do some more messaging. Like that's what our day looked like. And do not allow guilt 
it's for, especially for the moms that are on tonight, do not let guilt consume you because it will. It I was going to say, I was going to say moms and also just like people with significant others that are used to having 98% of your time. Because I started this business before I was a mom, but I've been with my husband for almost 10 years. We're about six months out from getting married. I shared this on the coffee chat this morning. I was like, poor Tyler didn't know he was marrying me and my it works business. That sucks for him because this is my passion. And now I do it all the time. But um, that's where, just like Danny was taught, she said, she said, I just need to get better with my schedule. And it is, it's like, when I'm with my kid, I'm just with them because when I'm not with them, I'm working so hard or I'm on date night or it's very specifically my Sabbath time. And so I don't have all of this like weird, like earlier today, he usually naps for two, two and a half hours. He only napped for an hour and a half. I thought I was going to have way more time than I did, but I didn't. He was awake. So what am I going to do? Spending the next hour feel crappy because I couldn't do what I needed to do. No, this is my kid. This is why I do what I do. He's my child. So we read, we played, made him a box of mac and cheese. We watched Blippi. Like we just did all the things. And while he was watching Blippi, I answered messages and I threw up a couple things in my story. And then we were right back to playing. And then we took a walk around the lake. I left my phone at home and we took a walk around the lake because I needed to, my anxiety was really bad today. I was like, I'm going to leave my phone at home. I brought my Apple watch. We're going to go for a walk. But I didn't feel bad about any of it. And I think it comes back around to this whole, just this decision and this willingness and this mindset of just what I do is always enough because it is. Mm -hmm. What I do is always enough because it is. Like, what if you just lived in this space of like, no matter how many messages I get out, as long as I gave it my best, it was as many messages as I needed. Yep. My post may not be worded exactly correctly but if they're my words and I'm putting them out there every single day it's enough I'm had a rough day with my kid today but I showed up for him and he knows that I'm here with him every single day he knows I love him that's good enough we are taught by society and we are whispered by the devil every single day you are not enough you are not worthy nothing you ever do is ever going to be enough so what if you just said er, on that and said, it is enough. It's always enough. I'm always enough. I'm showing up to the best of my ability in every area, every single day. And you keep showing up for those things every single day. And you just, and, but with that, not with the attitude of lack, not with the attitude of this like guilt and this like burden of like, not, this is like my biggest lesson of 2020 is like, I just have what I have. And I can either feel like the glass is half empty, or I can feel like the glass is half full. But that's what I have to give today <laughs> as a mom, as a wife, as a leader, as a business owner. So it has to be enough. Yep. Just do your best. Like, that's the thing. Now, if you spent the day and you, you didn't give it your best, then that's one thing. But like, if you can honestly say, I gave today everything I could give it, I have nothing more to give, like, be okay with it. Be okay with it. And like I tell my team, you have to allow God to meet you in the gap of whatever that is like you have to allow that him to meet you in the gap you can't do all the things every single day right we will no, and if you try you will end up like me which is four and a half years without a single day off completely burnt out exhausted not a good leader not a good wife not feeling good as a mom anxiety and depression on fleek like and then i stopped trying to do it all and it kind of fell apart for a little while, which was God's way of teaching me, like, things have got to shift. You've got to shift. Your leadership's got to shift. Your team stuff's got to shift. You're not ready for this next level yet. Let's figure it out. But the biggest thing was stop trying to control it all. We're not in control. And yeah. for those of us with anxiety, it's like, ding, ding, alarm bells. We're not in control. But we're not. We're literally not in control of this. We control ourselves. We control our actions. We control our habits. And God controls the rest period. So as long as you are showing up with your best foot forward every single day, you know who you are, you know where you're going, you know, you know what you're worthy of, you know, all of you who dropped ones, I got to go back up, scroll back up to see who dropped ones, but all of you who dropped ones who just want to be diamond, like just be willing to do the things. This went over what I thought it would, but it was so good. I'm so glad that we got to vibe and I'm excited to hopefully return the favor for you. Um, anything, so this was the last question actually. So we have a lot of new people. I'm sure you do too. Our teams have been exploding. We had this $39 deal in the new year and all the things. 
So what do you, what would you tell somebody who's brand new? They feel like they're doing all the things um, or maybe somebody who's relaunching, right? So they're just kind of getting into it or back into it and they feel like they're doing all the things, but they're not seeing the results that they want. What words question. do you have for them? My biggest piece of advice, and this is probably not what you want to hear, um, is to one, let go of your ego. And I don't say that in like a, a negative way, but I think sometimes, especially as adults, it's easy to get into know-it-all syndrome. Allow yourself to be a student. And what I mean by that is like, allow yourself to step back and say, okay, what I think I'm doing is not working. Who can I connect with? Who can I get to teach me something new that does work? Okay, you have to be willing to be a student of this business. Guys, I told you, I, I got stuck at Ruby for eight months and it was because I wasn't willing to be a student. It was this thing of like, well, I know how to do the things. I'm doing the things she told me to do. Why is it not working? Not once did I stop during that period and say, okay, let me take a step back because what I think I'm doing, what I think is right is not working. So let me take a step back relearn it because maybe there's a one like a tiny little centimeter long piece that I'm missing that I'm too self whatever to realize I'm missing step back for a moment like reach out to hope reach out to your upline and say hey listen I look I'm doing the things let's go over this together like what am I missing be the squeaky wheel it's not her responsibility to, to like seek you out you have to be willing to be the one to say man look I'm doing all the things. I did all the KPIs. It's still not working. What are you doing that's working for you that I'm not? What am I missing? Yeah. And then, and then when me and or Candace and or wh whoever's watching this and your upline, is, is you whatever, do what we tell you. And I don't say that to be sassy, but if you come to me and you're like, it's not, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. And I give you like three or four recommendations. You don't go to any of them. Sister, <laughs> sister, you cannot, you have to be coachable. You have to be willing, you know what I mean? So, um, but I love that. I'm, I am constantly a student. I am constantly a student. Like I, I had so many enrollments last year, more enrollments than I've ever had in the middle of a global pandemic. Go me. I'm still willing to learn. How do we get better? This morning on coffee chat, Kayla Sims, number one top distributor enroll in the entire company was on. I'm, I was like, I enrolled a lot of people last year, but I enrolled no 50 distributors in two weeks before I muted myself. I said, what's up? What are you doing? How's it going? And she was talking to us and pouring into us. And I'm never, ever not willing to try something different. And that's why I'm still here five years later. I truly believe like Instagram stories became a thing. I wasn't like, I got to diamond without Instagram stories. I don't need Instagram stories. No, I was like, let me figure this out. This Instagram stories thing, TikTok back in uh, February. I wasn't like, I don't need, no, no I started. I have almost 12,000 followers now. And I haven't exploded like Montana long or anything, but I'm there every day and I'm showing up and it's like, just have that, that willingness and that passion to do whatever it takes. Um, yeah. Even if it's not something that you, you like want to do. You're like, I don't really want to do that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, this was so good. Thank yeah, you so thank much for being one of us. Um, any, any last week, I mean, technically we have like a couple more minutes before we hit an hour. Any other questions for Candace, you guys, triple diamond, ears wide open, chat wide open, anything else people want to, want to know, want to hear, I'll give them a couple minutes. I'm just so excited. I'm just so excited. I can't believe they're bringing more conference than they already brought. Like if you don't, if you, I mean, I'm assuming if you're here, I'm just going to safely assume you have a conference ticket. Cause if you don't, I don't really know. Just well, if you don't, I just got mailed a bunch of codes. So let us know. So just do it no matter how tired you are. I'm exhausted. Can I give you some context? Cause Vanessa is a new mom of four with a full time <laughs> job. Just, like she's not just like normal, like lazy, exhausted. This mama is like for yeah. real tired <laughs> so number one get some rest right because you can't be productive when you're absolutely exhausted right the other thing that you have to keep in the forefront of your mind and I mentioned this already is one where there's a will there is a way you have to get so tired of where you are to the point that like 
and I told my team this as well, you've got to get past the sticking point, right? If where you are right now is not enough, you're going to have to do more for a period of time. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be exhausting. It's going to be all of those things, but you have to get past that sticking point to get where you want to be. Okay. It's not going to be easy. I wish I could tell you different. It's not going to, but once you get past that point, you start to have more options. It's just like when you guys hear the company talk about going diamond, right? We all know diamond doesn't happen overnight, but there's a lot of buildup and work that has to happen. And then when you go diamond, you get access to so much more money, right? It's the same thing, regardless of your rank. If you're not living the life that you want to live, you got to get past the sticking point. Because guess what? Whether your goal is diamond, Vanessa, I don't know what your goal is, but like, imagine when the day comes when you're making enough that you can hire somebody to come clean your house, that you can hire somebody to come watch your kids so you can work your business, but you got to get to that point first. And getting to that point is not going to be easy, but to whom much is given, much is required, right? Yeah. And when you and when you get over that hump, it's like it's a hump, you guys. It is uphill. It is working when you're tired. It's waking up early so that you can get that stuff done. Vanessa, I don't expect you to stay up till 2 a.m., but like you should go to bed and like wake up 30 minutes early. You know what I'm saying? Like find those space. Don't just think, oh, it has to be done this one way. Like figure out that time schedule for yourself figure out how to be more efficient with the things that you are doing. Like Candace said, take a step back. Vanessa's a Ruby. Um, so she wants to go diamond and that's, that's her thing. And so take that step back and reassess. Okay. I've been doing it this way, this way, and this way, but is that really working for me? Hope I've been doing it this way, this way, this way. How, what do you think? How should I do it instead? Um, and the same thing, I know Natasha is like very new, but she's saying it's kind of the same thing. She's like, I feel like I'm struggling to do it all. It's going to be a struggle to get into the habit. I say it takes 21 days to build a habit. You've been doing it for like four or five days, I think. I forget how many you've been doing. You've been doing it for like one week. And so um, you got to do two more weeks of the of the of the habit, of the push, of the task, of the getting the hang of it, sending all the screenshots, asking all the questions. And when you get over that hump, that sticking place there's going to be a downhill and then you'll try to go diamond. There'll be another uphill. And then you try to go triple and there's like three more uphills and new levels and doubles every time, but it's not ever not worth it. I don't, this is what I will leave y'all with. And I, I know that Candace will agree with me. There have been so many late nights. There have been so many early mornings. There have been so many tears. There have been so many people that I was sure they were going to sign up. And I send them my link and they post me. So many people who join my team and they kill it. They have, 8,000 Instagram followers. They don't do anything. And there is not one second of the effort and time I have put into this business that I would take back to have what I have now and to know what I know now and to be the person that I am now compared to who I was five years ago. Yeah. I, there, there was not one piece of me when I insert income disclosure statement here. Last June, when I saw my first paycheck, with two numbers and then a comma and then three more numbers that I was like, God, back in November of 2017, I really wish I would have just slept more. No, yeah, no, it never happens. You guys, it is so worth it. That's the piece you have to understand. It's hard. It's tiring. It's a struggle. It's a habit. It's a growth. It's a shift, but it's so worth it. It's so damn worth it when you see that paycheck, when you see that title, when you get added to the page, when you get added to the chat, when you get shouted out by corporate, like it is so worth it. It is so, so worth it. I think that's all. Thank you so much for doing You're this. welcome. Oh my gosh. Okay, Thanks you guys, I hope you all have a great night. Candice, we will, we will vibe again soon. Hopefully I can show up and do something for your team. Um, and I love y'all. Happy Monday. Let's go out and crush it this week. Hit me up if you don't have a conference ticket. We got codes for you guys. Oh, all right. All right. Bye.